we're trying to motivate our community. You know, times are difficult, times are confusing, and this is the time. This is the time we all need a little bit of motivation and a little push just to make it. Sometimes when we hear things from the outside world, you know, the way people tell us how we are, what to do, how to be, we listen to them, right? I mean, we, we, we actually listen to them and we follow what they want us to be. Uh, first, I'm gonna give you a background. Graduated with a master's and now I'm working on my PhD. This was a long road and this wasn't given to me. And I'm gonna tell you how I got there. And hopefully, it'll help you get motivated and get there as well. I came from New York City. I was born in Washington Heights, born and raised. This place was the ghetto. This place was bad. This is where everything bad happened. Uh, it was a drug infested area, no hope. The only career paths where I came from is either drugs or jail. That's what I look forward to. And the reason I'm, I'm, I'm touching on this is because I was told in school that as a minority male, statistically, I would either be in jail or I would be dead by the time I was 18. And again, I believed it. <laughs> I mean, I went, I, I believed what they told me. I mean, these were my teachers, right? So, and, and I saw where I lived. So this is what I thought was my life. So I gave up. I gave up on life. I said, what do I need high school for if I am going to die at 18? So I dropped out of high school. I dropped out and started living a life as if there was no life. Uh, I started drinking, I started selling, I started becoming a very negative person. I hated the world. Well, by the time I was 17 years old, I had my first child, my baby boy, Justin. I mean, I love this kid, but 17, no job and no education, and I already had a kid. By the time I was 18, I had three children, twin daughters and my son. So imagine this, right? This guy, we, we, we live in a, a, a very poor, I have three kids. And that's not to include the stepkids I was taking care of of other people. And this, this was my life and this is the way I lived. So I, I kind of got tired of this life and I didn't want to leave this uh, to my children. So I went back and I got my GED. So happens that back then they called it the good enough degree. I don't know what they call it now, right? They call it the good enough degree. So, so I, but I was happy with it. I was happy with my good enough degree. It was better than what I was doing before, okay? So I told people, I bragged about it, and, and, and you know, it, it's just crazy, but everyone down, people laughed at me. Like, what are you gonna do with that, you know? <laughs> and, and, and you know, I realized that it's true, that it, I wasn't gonna be able to do anything with that but I didn't need to change. I know I needed to change. I didn't know how to change. I didn't know what to change. All I had was negative people around me telling me what I could do and what I couldn't do. So I decided to move to Florida with my kids. Uh, I wanted to give them a chance. I moved to Florida and a few years later, my real challenge came to me. The challenge that made me who I am today. The mother of my children decided that enough was enough. Enough responsibility, enough with the money, she had other things to do, so she left us. She left us, she left me with three children, alone, hungry, no skills, no jobs, and a, just a good enough education. It, it was devastating, I didn't know what to do, so I went from home to home, I, I stayed with friends, I stayed with family, but come on, they got tired of me too, they got tired of me bringing three kids along with me everywhere I went. So it came a time where it was over for me. No one wanted to put me up and I don't blame them. I was on my own. At that time I met Carolina. She was a friend. She just came from another country. She didn't have a lot of resources. She really couldn't help me. She was just a friend. But she, she saw something in me. She kept pushing me. She kept telling me it's gonna be okay. I didn't believe her. <laughs> I, just, I thought the world was over. I thought, you know, I hated the world and I hated everything in it. So one day, uh, I had nowhere else to go. I used a debit card. At that time, the hotels, they would let you put the credit card on file. Uh, they wouldn't charge you. They'll let you come pay cash after you're done with your stay. So that's what I did. I mean, this, this debit card had no money in it. The account was closed, <laughs> overdrawn. 
it, it, it wasn't a working account, but it worked. So they gave me two weeks uh, to go ahead and, and stay there. And I promised them I would bring them the cash. So for two weeks, I stayed with three, these three kids in this hotel, hungry, trying to figure out what was I going to do with my life? Not only my life, what was I gonna do with their life? It's the longest two weeks of my life. It felt like years. Because I knew eventually they were gonna run that car and I knew eventually I was homeless again. So from there, I just laid in bed. I was so depressed, so down. I hated myself. I hated everything. I didn't feel there was no way out. I remember I used to go downstairs to the payphone and call uh, Carolina Collect, crying, confused, telling her I needed this to be over. I didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't want to be here anymore. This life wasn't for me. So one day I had a bright idea. Well, I thought it was a bright idea, right? One day, it was nighttime. Uh, it was the day before I knew they were going to charge that, that fake card or that card that with the account closed. And I sat there. Kids slept in the bed. And I sat there. We didn't eat for the day. We ate, we sh I think we shared a plate of rice. And I, it just hit me. It hit me. I said, you know what? I have a great idea. I know how I'm going to get these kids out of this situation now. I'm gonna go. It's time for me to check out of this world. Nobody wants me here anyway. Nobody cares. Nobody probably even knows. But at least if I'm gone, somebody will take these kids and take care of them. Because I don't want to be alone anymore. So that day, I opened the balcony. I was on the fifth floor. I opened the balcony door. I stepped to the edge. I looked over. And then I remember I was scared of heights. So I couldn't do it, okay? I remember I was scared of heights and it just wasn't gonna happen. I still wanted to go. So I thought that it just run to the other side of the room and I'll just run where I can't stop myself. So that's what I did. I can just remember as I stood at the back of the room and looked at that door, I can remember the, the shades blowing in the wind. It was a windy night. It was a, it, the, the, the night was crisp and, and the shades were just blowing inside the room. And, and as I looked at that door, I don't know, it's just fun when you're in, in, your, in your problem, these ideas seem like such a good idea. And I said, let me count down. So I did, count down from five. Then I went to four, then I went to three. By two, I was getting excited. I was thinking, how am I gonna look when I hit the floor? I'm thinking so many weird things, but it all seemed like a good idea, two. One. But something happened. Someone up there, whatever you believe in, didn't think it was my time. Because when I hit one, and I was about to go, my daughter, which coincidentally, her name is Destiny, I don't know if that means anything, woke up. And she goes, Papi, in Spanish, that's dad, come to bed. It, it happened. It just happened. It was over. My, my, my state of mind, my perspective changed. I realized, what am I doing? I'm looking at this whole thing wrong. Wanna know why? You know why I was looking at it wrong? Because here, I am thinking I'm alone in this world. I have no one that loves me. But yet there's three human beings laying in a bed that love me no matter what we're going through. I mean, we're traveling with three garbage bags of clothes. But they don't care. <laughs> they don't care, they, they still love me. So I've been looking at this thing all wrong. These, I do have people that love me. In fact, even better than that, I have people that are gonna wake up tomorrow waiting for me to take care of the situation. They're depending on me. It's not about me anymore. And it hit me. It, 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 was, it was it. And at that very moment, I got tired of hearing it. I got tired of people telling me how I was gonna make it. I got tired of people telling me when I was gonna make it. I got tired of people telling me who I was. So I decided I will never ever ask again if I will make it. I demand I'm gonna make it. It is the only way. And from that day on, my life has changed. Now, don't get me wrong, things still happen. It's like they say, we're either in a mess, getting out of a mess, or stepping into a mess. 
This is still true. The difference is I see it different now. I, my perspective is, is different. I no longer see it as an impossible feat, but a challenge that I must break through. I no longer see it as something that's gonna pull me down, but something that's gonna push me up. I see it as the last challenge before I get to where I wanna be. Listen, it's easy to dream. It's hard to act. What's a dream if you're not gonna go for it? And this is my chance. This is my chance to prove to every single person that I knew that they're wrong about me. I'm not a loser. I am gonna make it. And that was what I did. My whole life was focused on survival of these kids and making sure this never happens to them. Making sure they never do this. Making sure they never go hungry. Making sure they never have to beg. Making sure they will make it themselves. What did I do? Well, it was hard, but I had a cheerleader, right? My cheerleader, Carolina, just kept pushing. The only person she could, you have, you have, she just didn't stop. <laughs> you know how many times I told that girl to leave me alone? Because I thought she was up to something. Why is this girl pushing me to do better? Because she loved me, right? And it helped me. That's all the motivation I needed. I went back to school. I got my, my bachelor's degree in business. I got my master's degree in business. And I'm telling you right now, I'm one year away from finish, finishing my PhD in business. I'm not playing, folks. This will never happen again. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching the video. If you want to hear a little bit more about the story, Tales of an Underdog, it's out on Amazon. Uh, follow the links or visit my website at juliocaba.com. Uh, see kind of what I do. It was a long road. Hopefully, it will inspire you. Thank you again.